Hello, this lesson will focus on lexical semantics. If you remember, lexical semantics focuses on the meaning of words. So, in this case, the first question that we need to ask is related to the mental lexicon. So, what is the lexicon? How are words organized in dictionaries? And finally, how are words organized in our brains? So the answer to the first question is that lexicon may refer to either the set of all of the words and idioms in a language, that means all of the lexical items in a language, or they can also refer to the mental system that contains all of the information that we know about words. We call this our mental lexicon. Now, we can see that words are organized in dictionaries in alphabetical order, so there is no relationship between one word and the other, the organization is random, just following the alphabetical order. But in our brains, words are organized according to central meanings and also organized according to the relationship that they hold with other words. A central notion in lexical semantics is the concept of prototype. And prototypes refers to the clear central members of the denotation of a word. So this means that every word is going to have a central meaning that is going to be associated with it. For example, when you think of the word bird, what is the kind of bird that comes to your mind? So this first image that you get in your brain when you think of the word bird is what we call the prototype. Now, Etchison came up with this prototypical representation of the word bird. So you will see that when we think of bird, we're normally going to think of this kind of birds, first of all, such as a robin or a dove or a canary or a sparrow. And then there are some other kinds of birds that probably do not come to our mind very often when we think of the word bird, such as a, a toucan or an owl. And then later, of course, we will have dogs. And the last examples that represent the word bird will be a penguin and an ostrich. So these are the last examples that we think of when we analyze the meaning of the word bird. This central meaning then is the one that we call a prototype. So a robin is a prototypical example of the concept of bird and later we're going to see why this is the case. Prototypes are then the best example of the meaning of a word. And so when we think of a word such as breakfast or we are trying to come up with the definition of the concept man or woman, we're going to have a clear image in the mind of what the best example of breakfast is or the ideal man, the ideal woman. And something important to say here is that since the prototypes are tied to our personal and cultural experiences, they may vary to, from person to person. And of course, they will certainly vary from language to language. So what for us is an ideal breakfast for other another person and then for people in another country, this central idea of what a prototypical breakfast is or a man or a woman will be very different. Now, the question is, what makes up a prototype? And of course, a prototype can be defined in terms of semantic features. That means that some concepts are going to be some central properties that are going to be more or less defining of the concept. For example, some of the semantic properties that we can mention are singular versus plural, count versus mass nouns, human versus non-human, animate versus inanimate, male versus female, vertical versus horizontal, rigid versus flexible, and liquid versus solid. So we're going to provide some examples now to show how semantic features are important in the definition of a prototype. For this purpose, we'll go back to our example of the prototype of the concept bird. On the left column, you will see different examples of birds, such as robin, canary, sparrow, duck, penguin, and ostrich. And on top, we will see the different semantic features that make up the concept bird. So when we think of the word bird, we think of a small animal with feathers and a beak that is able to fly and sing. So these are the defining semantic features of the concept of bird. Now, what we have to do to find the prototype 
is to see how many of these elements each of the members of the category that means the different kinds of birds have and the one that has more of these semantic features will be more prototypical of the concept of bird and uh, vice versa the kind of bird that has fewer of these semantic features will be less prototypical of the concept bird we can see here then that robin canary and sparrow which were like the central prototypes of the concept of bird are the ones that have all of the semantic features that we take into account for the definition of birdness on the other hand we can see that an ostrich and a penguin lack some of these semantic features for example penguins and ostriches are too big for us to think of them first when we think of the word bird and of course uh, penguins and ostriches cannot fly right and they cannot sing and therefore if you see they are less prototypical of the concept of bird and we can see how a duck is in the middle because it is not small enough to be considered like the best example of bird but also ducks do not have the ability to sing and therefore they lack two important defining elements in the concept of bird this is then the way in which prototypes, prototypes are formed this means according to the different semantic features that they possess the more semantic features they possess related to the concepts the most prototypical they will be and vice versa now of course when we talk about birth it's this seems kind of obvious but there are some words in the language that need to be analyzed in terms of semantic features so that we can see the complete meaning of the word and this is an example we have some verse of movement here such as soar and plunge and whiz and whoosh and zoom and so on and then we have some defining semantic features that are going to help us to know what is the correct verb to use in what kind of situation so some of the elements some of the semantic features are speed of the movement direction of the movement control degree of ease and the medium in which the movement is made so according to this semantic features these defining characteristics we're going to see what exactly the meaning of each of these verbs is now these are things that you're not going to find in the dictionary but th that are important to analyze if you really want to understand the meaning of words so that's what the notion of semantic features is a very important one in semantic studies it is important to mention that the semantic features that are central for the definition of a concept are going to be different in different languages for example when we look at the, this image we will call these vasos in Spanish but in English they will be called cups now why is it so because for us in Spanish the important thing is the shape for us these um, objects have the shape of what we call a vaso and that's what we're going to call them vasos for them to be cups they will need to have a handle so handle in Spanish is a defining characteristic of the concept of cup and therefore we call them vasos but in English the central characteristic or the central element in the definition of glasses is the material they should be made of glass and therefore we're not going to call them vasos we're not going to call them um, glasses I'm sorry but we're going to call them cups okay because the material is the most important thing and of course if we look at another language in French they will not be called either um, tas or ver because for French these objects have different characteristics from the ones that you know the central concepts of tas and ver have and therefore they're going to be called with another name which is goblet so the conclusion here is that 
central semantic features will vary across languages and therefore it is very important to see that not all of the meanings that are central for a concept in one language will be exactly the same in another language and that's why it is very important to study semantic features and prototypes in different languages. I will conclude this lesson by showing how important prototypes and semantic features are in dictionary definitions. So the prototypes are used to illustrate the concepts that are being defined and the semantic features appear in the definition. For example, this is the definition of bird in the Cambridge Dictionary and we're going to see that the semantic features such as having feathers and wings and being able to fly are central defining elements. And of course, the illustration of the concept will be that of the prototype. We can see here a small bird which resembles a sparrow, for example, that is going to be used to illustrate the concept. So they don't show us a picture of a duck or an ostrich or a penguin, they will show us the picture of a sparrow because this is the prototypical example of the concept bird. So in this lesson we explored two central notions in the study of lexical semantics which are prototypes and semantic features. Thanks a lot for your attention and I will be seeing you next time.